The moments when you're on your own in space, looking down on Earth through the cupola window, they're very, very special. It's actually surprisingly quiet, calm, and tranquil. I mean, the space station is going at 25 times the speed of sound. So you have no, no forces on your body, um, and you feel very detached, very remote. With the exception of your five other crewmates, every other human being in the universe is, is living on that planet. I was a very normal school kid. I enjoyed school. I wasn't particularly uh, academically brilliant. I was very average. I was in the army cadets at school, but we had an Air Force section. So uh, every weekend when the Air Force section went, went flying, I would change from green uniform into blue uniform, go along with them on the bus and jump in the aircraft. First time I sat in the cockpit of an aircraft, I never looked back. I, I knew that was something that I wanted to do. It was an absolute driving passion. So I applied to be an Army Air Corps pilot. To be an Army pilot at the time, I needed three A-levels, get a place at the Royal Military Academy Sandhurst. That was actually a, a tougher hurdle to negotiate than you might think. I managed to, to get a C, D and an E at A-level in maths, physics and chemistry, which I think is actually not a bad message to send. I mean, uh, you know, the fact that you can still go on and achieve a degree later in life, uh, which I did. I was in my 30s when I gained a degree in flight dynamics. But it's more than just the academics, of course, getting into to Sandhurst. You have to go to the selection process and then spend a year at the academy which is a tough year so I just took everything one step at a time. I loved flying aircraft, I loved um, understanding what made them work, I loved trying to make them better and that led to becoming a test pilot. It was all about being in the cockpit, it was being at the sharp edge, pushing boundaries. And as a test pilot we work a lot more closely with industry and the space industry, the aviation industry are so closely linked that it really began to open my eyes to the possibility of becoming an astronaut. The astronaut selection process, it's a year long. It is a very demanding year, very tough year, but, but actually if you just break it down one step at a time, it doesn't have to be. Having had the military experience, I know that the one thing you, you can't do with this is to try and pretend you're somebody you aren't. So go along, relax, enjoy it. I knew I'd had lots of experience in the, that the military had given me and that that probably stood me in good stead. When I went for the, the round of hard skills, the majority of the people had PhDs very, very bright individuals, lots of scientists, lots of engineers. I felt completely out of my depth. You know, I, I, I got a degree at 30, I scraped through some A-levels when I was at school, and I've been flying helicopters for 17 years. How do I compete with, with these people? But at the same, in the same way, you've got, to, you've got to look beyond that and say, well, hang on a second, yes, they, they're bringing a lot to the party, but you also have to draw on your own character and your own strengths and think, well, you know, again, this is something I, I believe in and I'm going to give it my best shot, but I'm not afraid of giving it a go and I'm not afraid of, of failing it. I was just treating this as a, an incredible experience, an opportunity to, um, you know, try and go for something that was an absolute, you know, dream, dream job. Being assigned to a mission to the space station is the most euphoric moment of my life. When I received that phone call that said, you know, Tim, you've been given a mission and it's a long duration, six months. It was the culmination of, of all my hopes and dreams. By far and above the hardest moment in my life was saying goodbye to my family, um, waving goodbye as the bus took me to the launch pad. But actually at the, at the moment that the, the rocket lifts off, it's all about focus and, and, and being on the job. All the thoughts you've had prior to that about the risk and about leaving your family behind, that's done and dealt with um, when you strap in to the rocket. You make lots of sacrifices to be an astronaut, but of course you do that knowing that you have the opportunity to have one of the most privileged experiences that there are. When you actually get out there yourself, it's a mixture of emotions because it's absolutely phenomenal to see the universe from just a thin visor and to be able to turn around in any direction and just to be look one, one direction the Earth, the next direction the Milky Way. I think every astronaut looks at things differently when they come back. It changes your perspective. You get to see the Earth in its natural place in the solar system. Here on Earth, we don't appreciate the scale of the universe. So when you go into space and you then look back at this little blue jewel beneath you and you think, wow, that's the only place I know where we can survive, it becomes very precious to you. I think if ever you're told that you can't do something, you need to challenge it and think, well, why? Uh, school children have told me, or oh, my teacher said I'd never be an astronaut. So what, what was that based on? Well, just 
statistics. That's not a valid um, reason. You might be able to say, there's a very low probability of me becoming an astronaut, but that's not a reason to not have a go. There are so many different routes to perhaps getting where you want to be. A NASA astronaut colleague of mine um, wanted to be an astronaut desperately, thought, well, the, the way is to become a US Air Force pilot. That route didn't work out, and uh, he was devastated. Retrained as a, as a doctor, and actually ended up flying to the space station as a medical doctor. So he got there, but uh, you know, it was, a, it was a different route to the one that he originally thought he was gonna take. I've never forgotten, my chemistry teacher at school said, life is like a dustbin, you get out what you put in. Nothing is going to just roll in front of you and present itself. You have to work hard and then you will create your own luck.